In your health headlines, it is a common problem for kids returning to school. Head lice infestation and what's making it worse this year? Will some lice, including here in California, have developed resistance to chemical products? Dr. Mitchell Goldman with UC San Diego is here as he is every Tuesday to talk more about how it's transmitted and the best ways to prevent it. Good to have you, Dr. G. Nice to be here, Kathleen. All right, you hear super lice and that's like the thing of horror movies. What exactly are we talking about here? Well, essentially, there are about 10 to 12 million kids every year in the United States that get head lice. And there's actually an infesta infestation right now in San Diego, and it's in some of the more prominent, prestigious schools as well. And so these little head lice are everywhere. They are, the good news is they can't really cause infections. And so because of that, the Center for D Disease Control is not like really on top of this as they should. But what happens with head lice, and if you have hair that's longer than mine, is these little lice can be transferred from one kid to another just by touching heads like if you're doing a selfie or by sharing baseball caps or combs. And you mentioned kind of or walked around the stigma that comes with it saying that prestigious schools even get it because a lot of people don't even say that their children have it because they're sort of embarrassed and, and coupling that with San Diego being one of the more lenient cities uh, for allowing kids to return to school if they have it. It compounds the problem here, does it not? Absolutely, Kathleen. You know, people always thought, oh, it's because you don't shampoo, you're not clean, and it has nothing to do with that. Some of the most prestigious and expensive school, private schools in San Diego have infestations. It's all about lice are everywhere. And so what ends up happening with lice, however, is, you know, they only will live for about seven days, and if they're not being attached to you, if they're not sucking your blood, they'll actually die in two days. But when you see lice, it's important to, to really treat them. Now, a lot of the chemicals and, and other types of um, treatments that doctors would prescribe, these lice are so clever, they've developed a resistance. But there's one thing that you can do that kills all of the lice. All right, it, what is it? <laughs> it's the simplest thing. It's coconut oil. Basically, what lice do is they breathe along their sides. And if you just cover the scalp with coconut oil, usually leave it on overnight, but just a few hours will, is probably safe enough, they all suffocate. Now, the problem is that the lice will lay eggs, and those legs, those little teeny nits, are about of a quarter inch from the scalp. And so you, those eggs will hatch in about seven days. And so real quickly, how do you diagnose it? What should people be looking for, those little nits, right? Well. The nits are within a quarter inch of the scalp, but you actually will see them crawling all around. And so you just take a little magnifying glass, but you can see them with your naked eyes, and they're crawling around. Those guys actually move pretty fast when you're looking at them. So it's not a subtle diagnosis. It's not like dandruff or something else. All right, well, Dr. G, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much. And it's not a pleasant topic, but it is a common yeah. uh, problem. Or you for can families. get a haircut like I do, and that, no problem. That is an option. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Dr. G. See you next week.